الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد In this month of Ramadan we have a chance to do a self-analysis of our hearts of our wants and of, and of our needs and I think it's important for us to thank Allah Ta'ala for bringing us the month of Ramadan because many of us tend to see Ramadan as an opportunity and therefore we usually focus on Ramadan more than we would focus on any other day of the year. So I ask Allah Ta'ala to make this Ramadan an opportunity for us to strengthen our love for Him our, and our worship for Him and that we continue doing this throughout the year. I want to bring us back a step. I know that a lot of people act or they move in a direction based on what they think is the norm. A lot of people will try to distinguish themselves from others in different ways. Some, when we're coming about living in, in this life, our normal day can be waking up energized to make sure that we are good teachers, to make sure that we are good engineers, to make sure that we are, are good doctors. Some people see it on, as an opportunity that when they're with their friends, they want the best of technology, where they show people that they're up to date and they know and they have. Other people see themselves driving a, br a brand new car with the opportunity that is given to us in the financial markets. It is very simple for us to get the best of cars. And sometimes people will exert all their efforts, even if they have to take a massive loan to show that they're driving a brand new car. It could be any car, but they want the nice sleek car that's going to be attracting the attention. So they want to distinguish themselves from others. Others will try to dress properly and, and comb their hair in a certain way, trim their beard in a certain way. The new norm nowadays, back in the 80s and in the 90s, the beard was not a norm. Now the beard is a, a norm and, and it has to be trimmed in a certain way. And this is the way we see ourselves. Some are looking at the latest in shoes. A lot of the markets today are failing because they're not getting your business. Rather, we see that business is switching. Things are changing in time, so you're finding other ways 
of seeking that which makes you look good in front of your peers, that makes you look good in front of those people that, that you want to show that you are distinguished, that you are special. Some people will get the nicest purse, and some of these purses can be just as much as a car. Some of these people, or some of us, would like to have the, the nicest house in the nicest area, in the nicest location in the city of London, with lots of land and lots of trimmings and whatnot. So the list goes on and on about our wants and needs and trying to, to look and act distinguished, different, so that people can look at us so that people can see us. And I need to add to this list those people who may work or act for the sake of being patted on the back saying, yes, you did well today. We needed you at this time. This was the time of need in, in the city of London, and, and you, you came through. And then we have those people. Allah Ta'ala says, in, in the, hadith, uh, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, أول من تسعر به يوم القيامة ثلاثة الجواد الكريم وقارئ القرآن والشجاع الجريء ماذا فعلتم ماذا فعلتم بنعمكم So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is, says that the, there are three who will be tested and challenged first on the, on, on the day of judgment the person who likes to give, so that people can say, yes, he's kareem, he's hospitable, he gives, he's a good person. And then there's the person who says that I recited the Quran and I taught it and I gave out of my time. And then there's that person who's, who, who's fierce on the battlefield and who fights and is brave and is courageous in every move he makes. And these people will be questioned as to their intention. Because when Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ He says, I have not created for you the jinns, the jinn, and the human race, except that you should be worshipping him. Your acts of worship and everything you do and everything you see and everything you own and everything you move and everything you say and everything you, every person you talk to should be for this reason. So when you want to give and your, your, your intention is to give so people can say, he's hospitable, he's a nice guy or she's a nice person. Or when you read the Quran so that people can see that you're, you're, you're knowledgeable. You've memorized the Quran. You have the knowledge. This person's a scholar. And how so easy it is for us to call people scholars nowadays. This is something that is earned. And this is something that Allah Ta'ala will judge based on how you used it. And then you have the person who's courageous, who's the fiercest in the battlefield. And if he dies, Allah will ta'ala will hold him to account and ask him, why did you, why did you fight? You were brave. Why did you fight for the sake of Allah ta'ala? What was your purpose? He said, I, I fought so that uh, I, I could raise Allah Ta'ala's flag on the day of judgment. He says, he will say, 
No, you fought so people could say that you're brave, so they could say that you're courageous. And these are the first people who will be thrown into, into the fire in punishment because their intention is not to seek the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala, rather it is to seek their own desires, their own wants, their own needs. Uh, Adi bin Hatim al Ta'i, his father was known as a goat. He was known as, a, as the, the greatest person that, that lived when it came to hospitality and giving. Books are written and poems are written about Hatim al Ta'i. So when Islam was spreading and Islam encompassed their location and Adi came back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, my father did this and did this and did this. In Mecca, in Riyadh, if you go to Hajj in Umrah, you'll see restaurants named Hatim al Ta'i because of what he used to do and all the actions that he did in his time before Islam. And when Adi used this as a reference point, he said, your dad did whatever he did for, his, for, for that reason in specific, and he will be judged according to his deeds. We have Abdullah bin Jad'an. When Aisha radiallahu anha came to the Prophet and said, she, she asked about Abdullah. He, he's, he's so hospitable. He's so kareem. He gives. What do you make of Abdullah? So the Prophet Sallallahu answered in that he does not lift a finger in requesting that Allah Ta'ala forgives him. Meaning that he does this for the sake of showing his hospitality so that people can, can raise him up and say, raise his name and say, yes, it's, it's Abdullah who did this. It's Abdullah who did that. So the focus is on Abdullah. The focus is on worshiping Abdullah himself because he wants people to praise him. And we want to do things in a certain way where Allah Ta'ala says, or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-abd al-taqi al-ghani al-khafi. Allah Ta'ala loves the servant. And this is what we need to be doing is to see ourselves as slaves and servants where we are in humility to Allah Ta'ala and no other person, including ourselves, that we humiliate ourselves in front of Allah Ta'ala. When he says, Allah loves the slave, the pious, the one who's free of any wants or any needs, and the one who, wants to, who, who goes to be unnoticed. He does not want to show off. We have many examples where Rabi'a ibn al-Aslami, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the, well, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, what do you need? Rabi'a, what, what do you need? Ask, ask me for anything. And the, where other sahaba were asking to get married and others were asking for, 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 for them to, to, to have uh, risk and barakah, and other people were asking of different things. In the, in, uh, uh, in, and then Rabi' al-Aslami comes and says, أَسْأَلُكَ مُرَافَتُكَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ He says, I ask of you, O Prophet of Allah, to be by your side, your companion in Jannah. He says, this is all you ask of me? This is all I ask you to ask for anything and you just ask for this? And this is the humility of, of being a role model, an example, one who, who does not ask and what doesn't want to show that he's asking. But he asks for, for only the companionship with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jannah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنِّي عَلَى نَفْسِكَ بِكِثْرَةِ السُّجُودِ so help me, 
in your request for yourself that you increase the sujood, your prayers, the prayers that we may miss, the wajibat, the fara'id, the ones that we're supposed to be doing five times a day. And beyond that, when he talks to Rabi'ah, he's not speaking to him about completing his five daily prayers. He's saying, exceed that. If you really want to be my companion, you have to exceed, you have to distinguish yourself. You have to be different from others. So what does that mean? It means that when people are when people are sleeping in the middle of the night, you're up in your salat praying the last third or the first third or the middle third. All of them are good. That which you can perform. But we need to start somewhere. And we need to make sure that our obligatory prayers, our fara'id, are, are done properly. So we need to learn and to, to make sure that we're doing them right. And we need to, to read a little bit of Qur'an so that we can communicate with Allah Ta'ala. And then we need to continue with the Sunan al muakkada the supererogatory prayers that Allah Ta'ala gave us through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we can do this, then as they say, the sky is the limit. Then the road is, is paved. Those who, who think that they can move over the, the, the sirat, the path on the day of judgment that takes you into Jannah, that you can path over, uh, pass over that without doing anything, with focusing on yourself, with focusing on your desires, with focusing on impressing other people and, re, 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 and, and forgetting your responsibility to Allah Ta'ala who's created you. We're watching a program on television with the different animals and different colors of frogs, the beautiness that Allah Ta'ala has, has, has come up with. And some of this beauty, some of these, these, these creatures are, are also venomous and dangerous. Now, these creations are for you to see that Allah Ta'ala is mighty, is strong, is powerful. He creates things like this. These don't just create from themselves. So we need to put a little bit of effort into worshiping our Creator so that on one day, when there will be no shade except the shade of Allah Ta'ala, that we will be prepared to meet, meet him, inshallah. Wa akulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله I want to say a few words that are very important for me as a reminder to myself and to yourselves this is a, a month of, of, of opportunity and if we really focus on establishing that relationship with Allah Ta'ala the way it's supposed to be, then the road will be paved for us in the year to come. We won't be slacking on our, on our prayers. We won't be slacking on our responsibilities. But sometimes you, you, you cannot just be focusing on yourself and you can't show people that you're doing things because of fear that people will, will praise you and fear that Allah Ta'ala will, or fear that you'll be using this to raise yourself 
and raise that, 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 that inner feeling that people usually like when people talk about them. So we need to be careful. But at the same time, we need to do as Ali bin al Hussein did. When, when he was in his time, he would go around to different places giving before Fajr. So he would be supplying people food. And people would open their doors and find that, that there's boxes of food or, or food, food uh, containers for them. So people would be wondering who it is that would be giving this food and they would never know until Ali bin Hussein, the grandson of, of Ali bin Abi Talib, until he died one day. And they realized that this food stopped being distributed. They realized it was him who was giving. It's the same with Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and ever he would get involved in, in performing an act, whether it's visiting a grave, visiting the, the sick, or giving from all of his wealth. When the other Sahaba tried to do or compete or to be better than him, they would never be able to exceed this. But they never knew that it was him until they realized from somebody else that this was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. And this is, this is the actions that we need to do for ourselves. If we are truly in submission of Allah Ta'ala as Muslims. I want to leave you with this last word. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned Durhamun sabakat mi'at alf durham. رَجُلٌ عِنْدُهُ دُرْهَمَانٌ فَتَسَدَّكَ بِأَحَدِهِمَا وَأَبْقَ الْآخَرِ وَرَجُلٌ عِنْدَهُ مَالٌ كَثِيرٌ فَأَخْرَجَ مِنْهُ مِئَةَ أَلْفِ دُرْهَمْ لَا يَسْتَوُونَ So the, the Prophet ﷺ spoke about a person who had two dirhams. If we want to compare it to two dollars, he had two dollars. He was not wealthy. But that's all he had. So he gave one dollar in charity and kept one dollar for himself. And he compared him to somebody who was wealthy, who, who gave a hundred thousand dirhams, or if we want to co compare it, a hundred thousand dollars. But he's wealthy, it's easy for him. So the measurement in Allah Ta'ala's eyes was very evident. It's not about how much you give. It's about how you give it and what is the meaning behind it. When I give half of my wealth, knowing that I'll barely live off the other ha half as compared to the person who has multitude of, of dollars and has no problem surviving or living and gives. There's a huge difference in reward. So what I'm saying is that an ounce of, of, of good can be numerous in the eyes of Allah Ta'ala. And do not discount Allah Ta'ala's mercy in this month or in any other month. And this is a lesson for us as a Muslim community. For us to grow, we have challenges. In order to raise above these challenges, we want to raise our, our community. It's not just about us. It's also about those who are going to be coming after us. And if we don't establish something for them, then we're going to be asked on the day of judgment, what did you do for those who came after you? We have the Better Together campaign in the London Muslim Mosque, which is based on a property that just down the street in walking distance. Why did we have to, why did we have to purchase another building because we're running out of space. The Quran HIF program is, is full capacity. We have no space. When COVID uh, is over and they solve the vaccine issue, just know that we have to come back here and we have to build. The building continues. And we have the weekend Islamic school 
was full capacity. We have no more room. And we have the LIS at the same time, which has a full-time program and offers a very, very successful program. And, and it is one of the strongest programs in the city of London. So we need to expand because it's good. It's progress. It's not about me. It's not always about me. So it's important that if you give from that which Allah Ta'ala has blessed with you, He will bless you with more. Believe in this because Allah Ta'ala promises that if you give from what He has blessed you with, He will show you multitudes of, of khair, multitudes of good. So I reach out to you in a request to help us be successful. وَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا يُوَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا ورد اللهم عن الأربعة الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي ومن تبعهم بأحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أولي أمورنا خيارنا ولا تولي أمورنا شرارنا وارفع مقتك وغضبك عنا ولا تؤاخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا وتوفنا وأنت راض عنا يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار كموا إلى صلاتكم أكم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Just want to remind everybody that there is a event this evening at 7:30, and it's an iftar, and we have different people who are going to be uh, representing uh, the, the the Muslim community, including our Sheikh Arish, and we also have uh, people from the different religious uh, backgrounds, uh, from the Jewish community and from the Christian community. We ask you to join this iftar at 7:30 p.m. today, inshallah.
فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى